Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. This movie was made by Luc Besson. He's the same guy who did Leon the Professional, as well as The Fifth Element, and probably some other movies, but those are the two that I remember most other than this one. This movie seems like it could have been set in the Fifth Element universe, just based on how the technology is and kind of the, the rough and tumble and uh, like gritty-ish nature of the technology implementation, but also the fantastical level of the technology and the um, just, just the, the visual aesthetics and how things are integrated. It just very much felt like, maybe not necessarily during the Fifth Element time frame, but perhaps in the 100, 200, several hundred years following the Fifth Element, just with the, like, you know, overall culture sort of keeping the same, but with some, a couple of leaps in technology. I really enjoyed this movie. Essentially what it is is that uh, Valerian is a major in some type of military for the Earth, and Cara Delevingne's character is a sergeant, chief, master, or something, some type of enlisted, and they are teamed up to go and, like, they're on a mission to go save a thing, and that thing leads to a bigger conspiracy or a bigger uh, problem with world-ending type of, of stakes, but it's still very flippant in its tone. And here's where the problem comes in. Cara Delevingne was, like, the it girl for a little while, and she does have some ability. Like, she is good in some things that she does. And Dane DeHaan, uh, who you probably remember from Chronicle, and then also the Spider-Man, or the Amazing Spider-Man 2, where he was, like, the fucked-up Green Goblin. Yeah. So, he was also really up-and-coming, and so you have two really up-and-coming, soon-to-be It Girl and It Boy actors put them in a movie together and launch it. That'll help launch their careers, and it'll also, because they're new, hot, and up-and-coming, it'll also help the movie. I feel like that is why they were cast. I don't know for sure, but my problem with them is I like, I really, really like Chronicle. That is an excellent, excellent fucking movie. And I like some of the things that I've seen Cara Delevingne in. So I know that she can act, and I know that he can act. But they just don't work in this movie. I think a majority of it is that they don't have any chemistry at all with each other. But the other thing is that I don't think that, and again, it could have been Luc Besson's direction, because maybe he was just trying to recapture the fifth element with Bruce Willis and uh, Mila Jovovich and all those other characters, and he was, tr and you know, Chris Tucker, and he was trying to capture that feel, but with new actors. But that was lightning in a bottle, <laughs> perhaps, and it did not work with these two. And it did not work with the universe that they were in. Because there was so much that they would just go back and forth. Like, okay, so they're about to enter into this planet. And Cara Delevingne takes over and she's like zooming in. And he's like, oh, whoa, hey, Scott, you're going to kill us. Like, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? And so she like takes her hands off the controls and be like, hey, am I not the greatest pilot in the world? And she's like, yes, okay, yes, you are. You're the greatest pilot in the world. Please put your hands back in control. No, I want to hear you. Are you going to are you going to side seat drive for me? In a more endearing way. <laughs> And he's like, yes, you know what, you're right, I'm sorry, you are the best pilot in the world, everything's gonna be fine, and I will stop uh, nagging you, could you please drive now? She's like, okay, fine. You know, <clears throat> so we're trying to get that, like, she's fearless, and while he's previously established as, like, a fearless, awesome, badass dude, like, he either has some trust issues, or, and or, like, not entirely fearless, so she's still there to like, poke him in and be like, hey, I'm I'm also fearless, like, we are in this together. But also, it's supposed to be that he's scared that they're in, like, a death-defying, like, zoom into the planet. But then they're having this conversation, like, if he was really scared that it was gonna be the thing, he would have, like, ordered her and, like, been more forceful. So, he's scared, but still, tr still waiting for her to take over, and she is trying to prove a point to him that you need to, like, stop side seat driving for him to, like, take over. I don't know. It's... <sighs> it just... It doesn't work, especially because they either established later or previously, I don't remember which, that the computer, like, the, you know, 
AI thing that is, that is flying that, that, is ta that is, does the majority of the work. It's sort of like having a Cortana with you or whatever, um, shoot, I forgot the name, but, you know, Iron Man and the, the guy, Jarvis. It's like Iron Man having a Jarvis. The, the, the ship is their Jarvis, and they are regularly in contact with it even when they're not on the ship because they have, like, a, you know, installed, like, communication device. And super smart, intelligent thing, and it has shown to be autopiloting them, like, to the surface and back on other planets. So why is she taking over at all other than to prove this point? And I think that's where a lot of the problems come in for this is that they have, there's supposed to be things that you are feeling like scared that they'll die or that other people will die or that's a dangerous situation. But these guys are still trying to get in their jokes and try to keep the like, oh yeah, I mean, I really love my hand right now. It, it would be great if you had my hand right now. Okay, cool. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you know, they, they are trying for, I don't know, like a funner version of a James Bond being able to quip while everything's going to haywire and shit around them. But they just, they don't hit the mark at almost any point. Like, none of the quips quite match with the tone. And I think that's the thing, is that it's not like Justice League, where they just kept on inserting Marvel-type quips. I think that overall, it's trying to squeeze two very different styles together throughout the movie in a way that they thought worked, and in my opinion, does not work. The tone and the delivery of these lines just doesn't make it make it doesn't keep the tension up and it doesn't keep me as interested as I think I should be and there's random side tangents like this movie does eventually bring some of the like nuggets that they kind of drop that you're just like that's a weird side thing whatever and then you think it doesn't matter a number of them do come together at the very end but for the most part this movie is just side quest like they're trying to do this thing and this thing pops up so they have to have this quippy, quippy conversation, like this back and forth conversation, and then they have to go do this side thing in order to get this thing, so that they can do this thing to get back to doing the main thing. Like, you know, I, and that's just not something that I usually enjoy. Like Mandalorian season one, I didn't really care for because it was just him running into a problem, having to solve that problem to then go to the next planet that he would have a problem with and solve that problem just because he was trying to do this main thing that he could never fucking get to. And... This movie, I think, has a lot of that going on, but in a worse way, because our main actors, excellent actors though they are, have no chemistry with each other. So that's a lot of bad for this movie. However, I still very much enjoyed this movie overall, because he's hot, she's hot, they, not nearly as strong as they should be, I think, for the roles. Like, in terms of, like, physique, I don't think it quite matches the, like, amazingness that they're supposed to be doing, whatever... But he's hot, she's hot, they are, they are excellent actors, and the CGI and the realm that they go into, like, the world environments that they go into are so, so well thought out. And how they interact with each other makes so much more sense. So the, the technology and how the technology interacts with the characters and with the, the other technology and the environments around them is explained so well and done in such a way that it doesn't feel like they are pausing and being like, and so the characters, in order to be able to access this realm, need to do this thing. Watch as they go. In this instance, you might be confused as to why that's happening. Like, they don't do that sort of thing. They do a much better job of having natural enough insertions and, like, miniature events of the thing to explain how the technology is working to make it work. So that you're never confused as to how a technology is doing the thing, or why a species or a thing, or how something works in the world. Again, it's just our two main actors that kind of don't have the right tone. But everything else really, really works. And I really like that. Uh, they do an excellent job in the opening with that song and uh, showing the time progress. Like, if you thought that that was clever and a good way to have opening credits, then I think you'll enjoy the rest of this movie. And... Ooh, even the, uh, the characters that you see momentarily, I wouldn't say momentarily, like, the, for, for a couple minutes in the beginning, too. Oh, man, I, uh, I about cried when that thing happened uh, in, again, like, the first 5, 10, 15 minutes. I don't remember if the, the, like, opening song, opening credits happened first, or the thing that happened to the planet happened first. But 
those are on the planet happen first, but those two things, such excellent tones and really hit you in the feels right away. And so that really pro propels the movie and keeps you engaged, I think, for a lot of the weirdness of like the romance that they tried to really shoehorn in between the two main characters that I just, I never found believable. But I enjoyed the technology. I enjoyed the side characters. The side quests, yes, I think that they're a bit too sidey and would have liked to get, keep on the main quest, but I still enjoyed them and thought it was funny. There was laughs. There was other actors that you'll recognize doing little cameos, and it was an enjoyable time. This movie is very, very enjoyable action comedy if you just, just enjoy the experience. You just need to relax and enjoy the experience. It's not quite as good as The Fifth Element, because The Fifth Element had a romance and actors that had chemistry. This did not, but if you can get over that, I think you're in for a real fun movie. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye!